me notice behind the wheel of the 7 generation 3 series is the fact that it's a bit more grown up and literally so because it has grown in size both in track and length and even the wheelbase itself so it feels like a larger car and that translates instantly to a lot more luxurious ride quality like on the streets of bombay right now which have been completely battered because of rains uh, not a single pothole has really shaken me up so full marks for the ride and handling balance at the same time it's fun as well because hey, it is a 3 series right so when you switch it to sport mode you can really have some fun because it goes like stink and it handles beautifully the chassis is fantastically balanced the steering still gives you a lot of feedback it doesn't have that kind of communicative feel like the older generations of the 3 series because they've tried to go for the more comfort oriented setup but even then this really does put a smile on your face and there is no mistaking this 3 series for anything else this is still the best and the most fun to drive compact sedan out there In the cabin of the BMW 320D, things remain quite familiar, especially if you have been in modern BMWs. You get a nice big 12.3 inch screen as the digital instrument cluster, and it's well laid out. You have the speedometer on the left, the maps in the center, and your upside down drive counter on the right. It looks pretty futuristic. You also get a nice big 10.3 inch touchscreen for infotainment, and that supports Apple CarPlay, even wireless CarPlay, which is great. What it does not support is wireless charging, which I find a bit surprising in a car of this caliber. You do get USB-C though, which is I think a new trend, and I'm glad BMW has started supporting that. You also do get standard USB, and you get the latest version of iDrive, which is 7.0. Now, typically people believe that the iDrive systems are a lot more easier to use and probably the best of the lot between Audi, Mercedes, and BMW. Somehow, I'm just not getting to grips with this one. It, it just seems a bit. Uh, overlaid confusing and not very intuitive to be honest i prefer the mercedes system but that's just me the audio system is standard in this case it's not branded it's not bowers and wilkins it's not harman kardon but even then it sounds very nice it's taut punchy defined and it has a center speaker as well so that helps anchor the image and overall i think it's a pretty standard cabin you won't get bored but if you do bmw does have a trick up its sleeve hey bmw I'm bored. I can't imagine that you're bored. Maybe you haven't yet had the chance to try sport mode. So the German engineers did put a lot of wit into the system, so I have to give it to them. So there's no way you'll get bored in a cabin of a BMW 320D purely because you're going to be behind the steering most of the times and this is the best place to be in this car. The seats are nice and supportive. The seating position itself is spot on. It makes you feel like you have to go fast in this car even if you don't really need to. I love the way it feels in your hands, the grip of the steering, the paddle shifts, the layout itself. This is probably one of the best compact sedans to be inside as well. So we have shot this video before the car was launched and the prices were out. So I can't be sure exactly how it's going to be priced, but it should be in the region of about 45 to 50 lakhs. And for that price, I'd say that the interior itself isn't a very very special place. It is a very modern place for sure. It does feel very 2020 because of its huge screens, its eye drive, the top quality materials. So there's no denying that BMW has spent a lot in designing the car. Maybe it doesn't have the glam factor of a new C-Class, but even then, if you're a driver, I'm sure you're going to be opting for this one.